Beardo Benjo. So, let's talk about this Morbius trailer, shall we? Yesterday, I was a little bit out of the loop. I wasn't, uh, I didn't have my finger on the pulse of entertainment. I missed a few big updates. But I'm back today, and I've come back this morning to find the internet is ablaze with speculation, questions, rumours, all sorts around this Morbius trailer that Sony and Marvel, the partnership they have, released yesterday. I think it was yesterday. So then I watched the trailer myself, and I've watched the trailer several times, and I fully understand why the internet has questions and why geek fandom and MCU fandom have questions. The trailer throws up some pretty interesting, possibly just easter eggs, but some interesting things nonetheless. Some stuff that could spell out real changes for that business partnership between Sony and Marvel going forward, or perhaps it's nothing. Perhaps it's literally nothing, but it's hard to believe that this stuff is nothing. The seeds that are being sown here seem so substantial, some of them, and I'll get onto this in a minute, that it, in my opinion, surely can't mean just nothing. Right, before I get into this discussion, uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already, leave me a comment if you've got some opinions around this matter, I'm sure a lot of you do, and leave me a like if you like the video. Um, all engagement is appreciated and I always respond to comments. Without further ado though, let's jump in and talk about this Morbius trailer, and more specifically, the elements within the Morbius trailer that have got everyone a little bit excited. Okay, this image here is the most controversial, or theory creating image in the entire trailer of Morbius and it's easy to understand why. The relationship between Sony and Marvel for the longest time has been quite bizarre, quite strained but in recent years we're starting to move towards maybe something a little bit more coherent, a little bit more kind of like they're working together to create something a little bit bigger than just both studios owning the rights to separate properties. For the longest time, that's how it was. Sony put out Spider-Man movies, Marvel can create Marvel movies, and never the twain shall meet. Then we got to the point of Civil War, and obviously an agreement was, was made um, whereby Marvel could use Spider-Man in their films, but he was still kind of a Sony property, so they're still hands-on with, with the ownership of Spider-Man. It's a little bit confusing, it's a little bit convoluted, but it worked. We got Spider-Man in the MCU. Fantastic. I am happy for that. And then when Spider-Man has his own solo outings, it's still Sony that are fronting that and it's still Sony Pictures, but uh, Kevin Feige had uh, a hand over the process and kind of was able to steer that and help create the Spider-Man films in a way that they would still fit in with the MCU. So, as I say, a confusing relationship, but one where they'd both kind of seemingly started to work together. Then we had the incident whereby Sony and Marvel seemed to fall out. The parents kind of had an argument and went their separate ways, um, and they said that Spider-Man could no longer appear in the MCU films. I took that terribly, that news. I was gutted because I love Tom Holland. I think he's a fantastic Spider-Man. Um, and I think his removal from the MCU would be a huge blow to that created world and that created universe, especially after, spoiler alert, losing Tony Stark at the end of Endgame. I think he really fills that gap and fills that kind of familiarity spot that they've got that can kind of drive the franchise forward. But then things seem to be worked out and then a strange kind of new deal was formed whereby Sony said, yeah, they can continue to use Spider-Man. He'll still be in there, but we're doing our own thing. And it's all a little bit up in arms. It's all a little bit bizarre still to me. The bottom line thing that I read though was that Spider-Man can still be in the MCU and I said, yeah, that's fantastic. But I think it was only for a certain period of time or a certain amount of movies. But Sony are still making Spider-Man universe films. And when they make a Spider-Man film, although he exists in the MCU, it's one of their properties. It's their, their film, basically. But they're still making Spider-Man universe films. They made Venom uh, and now they're making Morbius. And this is where this trailer comes along. And this is where this shot is really bizarre. Now the reason this shot is bizarre, and I'll just break it down if, you, if you're not sure or you haven't seen the online for already, is here's Morbius running away from, it looks like jail, he's broken out, it looks like he's in his kind of the, his orange jumpsuit. And as he's running away, he moves past this Spider-Man picture on the wall. Now the most interesting thing about this Spider-Man picture is it's the Sam Raimi era Spider-Man suit. It's not too bizarre because Sony owned those films. Sony created those films. They're part of the Sony Spider-Man heritage. But for that to appear on a wall in an era whereby Tobey Maguire isn't Spider-Man, uh, Tom Holland is Spider-Man, and Sony and MCU uh, Marvel are working on a partnership, are working together with an idea that a universe is kind of all-encompassing, it's strange to see, effectively, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man on the wall. Across the picture is scrawled the word murderer. Now, if you've seen Spider-Man Far From Home, and this is a big spoiler alert if you haven't, 
at the end, he is framed for being a murderer, basically, posthumously by Mysterio. Um, he, some footage is edited together and it's publicised to the world whereby Spider-Man looks like he committed this huge attack, um, murdered Mysterio. Mysterio was the good guy all along. Spider-Man was trying to use these drones to kill people, to cause mass destruction. It was a whole thing. But he was branded as a murderer at the end of that film and that's where we last saw Spider-Man in the MCU. And then we see this. A new film from Sony with a picture of Spider-Man on the wall with murderer across him, but it's not Tom Holland's Spider-Man. And that just throws everything into whack. Everyone starts losing their minds. Now, my first theory around this image isn't very exciting, but is still possible, is that it just means nothing. It's just an Easter egg. It's just a way for Sony to show their one rich Spider-Man heritage. They had that trilogy of Tobey Maguire films. Obviously, they had the Andrew Garfield films as well. The Tobey Maguire films are still held in very high regard. And it's a way to kind of, in an Easter egg type way, show, there we go, bit of our heritage there. Remember Tobey Maguire? Remember those films? Weren't they great? The second reason I think it might mean nothing is because of this image. This image here is an image from Sony's Spider-Man game for the PS4. This is the image that's on the wall. If we look at it, you can see. Now it is flipped, um, but you can see that this is the exact image that's on the wall um, in that shot with Morbius from the trailer. Let's have a little look, because flip back and forth between them, I guess. Here is the picture from the trailer. There he is, so as I say, it's been flipped. It's, it's, it's flipped the other way, it's mirrored. And here is the image from the Spider-Man game. There it is. So in my opinion, it feels like this is purely just a way to pay homage homage to the franchises that Sony own that have done really really well and have been really really popular in the past to do with Spider-Man so here's a game that sold exceptionally well on PlayStation 4 it was a fantastic game um, and they they rightly should be very proud of it and obviously Tobey Maguire's suit being the choice of the the, the image um, makes a lot of sense because it's another property they owned and was should be very proud of again there was a great trilogy of films so, although I'd like to think it's some kind of ooh, multiverse style, ooh, Tobey Maguire in the uh, Spider-Man universe going forward, as much as that would be very, very cool, I think it's purely just an Easter egg to show off something they're very proud of, um, a bit of Sony's heritage in terms of Spider-Man and the products they've created that surround Spider-Man. It's a crazy image, it's a strange image, and it's a kind of... I guess a debate will probably rage on forever around why they picked Tobey Maguire's suit and Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. As much as I'd like to say maybe they're setting up some kind of real-world Spider-Verse type film where they bring Maguire in and they bring in uh, Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland and they're all there. That would be amazing, by the way. Um, I'd love to say that that's something they're, they're setting up or seeds that they're sowing and who knows, maybe they are, but I don't think that's the case in this instance. I think it's just homage to the products and the history they have with Spider-Man as a character. If you wanna go right down the rabbit hole with this, there is a little bit more ammunition in your belt around a kind of a multiverse theory. Now that information also comes from Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, if you've seen the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, and I'm sure you all have, they were great films, I'm sure you'll all remember this gentleman here. J.K. Simmons is, in my opinion, the only person that can play J. Jonah Jameson. He is incredible in that role. Uh, he embodies the character, and I just think they got that casting so, so, so right. Now, I'm jumping back into spoiler territory if you haven't seen Far From Home, but at the end of Far From Home, which is, again, not connected to the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies as far as we know. Tom Holland is the only Spider-Man. It's part of the MCU. This gentleman shows up again, playing the same character, looking a little different, but still as J. Jonah Jameson. And there he is. So J.K. Simmons is J. Jonah Jameson in both the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man universe and the Tom Holland MCU connected Spider-Man universe. Now I think, personally, again, to be boring, that's just a, a case of a little bit of fan service. Sony, Marvel, they all must realise how much people loved J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. He is the embodiment of that character, as I just said, and I don't think anyone else could play him even half as good as he plays that character. But if you want to go down the rabbit hole and connect this all back to that use of a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suit on the wall in the new Morbius trailer, you could reach and 
say that there's some kind of multiverse going on here because they're starting to build up loads of odd connections and conflicting information that relates back to their previous films that weren't in any way connected to the new universe and the new setup of films that are going forward. Now, obviously, in Far From Home, there was a lot of talk around the multiverse. It never actually amounted to anything, but there was talk of the multiverse. And in the wider MCU scope, there has been talk of the multiverse. It's referenced, obviously, in Doctor Strange and in Multiverse of Madness. It's literally the, the name of the new Doctor Strange film that's coming up. It will probably be addressed a lot more directly. So there is reason to believe they could be going for some kind of strange alternate reality multiverse versions of Spider-Man crossing over. But it is a bit of a reach, if I'm perfectly, perfectly honest. But that's not all that came out of this trailer. This trailer is filled with crazy stuff that connects films that probably shouldn't be connected. The final thing that connects all these films that, again, shouldn't probably be connected is this little tidbit. Now, do you all remember this gentleman here from Spider-Man Homecoming? This is Vulture, played by Michael Keaton in Spider-Man Homecoming. Great villain, loved it. Absolutely fantastic. Now, at the end of Homecoming, it seemed like they were trying to set up some kind of Sinister Six angle. And that's something I think we've wanted to see in a Spider-Man film for a very long time. It's something I've wanted to see in a Spider-Man film for a very long time, at least. Now, at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, we did get uh, a little bit of a teaser for maybe some Sinister Six action. Now, in Homecoming, we were already introduced to Matt Gargan, who is this gentleman here. Uh, I forget the actor's name, but he is absolutely fantastic. Um, I think it's Michael Mondo. I'm not sure. I forget the name, but he is insane. He played Vass in Far Cry 3. Now, he in Spider-Man Homecoming was Scorpion's character, Matt Gargan. And at the end of Spider-Man Homecoming, Matt Gargan and Michael Keaton's character, the Vulture, are both in prison together. post credit scene, they meet up as an exchange that kind of hints at, let's go get Spider-Man. Let's take him down together. Now, we haven't seen anything pay off since then. But in this Morbius trailer, to make things even crazier, it feels like they're starting to maybe set up the payoff. Michael Keaton. Now, it isn't clear at this point in time whether he is playing the Vulture. But I don't know why he wouldn't be. It's a strange choice of casting if he's not. He's there. He's speaking in that same droll that he has when he's in uh, Homecoming. Um... They don't reference his character name. He just sees Morbius and says something along the lines of, and I'd be paraphrasing here, um, yeah, Morbius, I, you're done playing the good guy game now, I see. And then he says something like, what's up, Doc? Michael Morbius. Got tired of doing the whole good guy thing, huh? What's up, Doc? Something like that. But it's a strange line. It's kind of hinting at, oh, so you're, you're giving up trying to be a good guy now. Come and join the bad guys. Now, to my knowledge, Morbius has never been part of a Sinister Six team in the history of the comics. I could be wrong. Tell me if I am. But that doesn't mean they're not going to try something new in the films. It's very strange because this would technically be the first instance of a character from an MCU-connected Marvel film appearing in a non-Spider-Man fronted Sony film. And that's a strange and exciting proposal going forward. I don't know what was spoken about behind closed doors when Marvel and Sony got together and hashed out this deal or renewed this deal. I don't know what was spoken about. But it really excites me to think that we're going to start to see a little bit of a more grand collaboration between these two studios. It would benefit both of them, if the stories they were making existed in the same universe, it would give Marvel an opportunity to get out more films more regularly because a second studio is working on those films. It would benefit Sony because then people were going to see them films because they're connected to the wider Marvel universe and they want to have the full picture. So I don't see why they wouldn't move forward like this in the future. Now, I am just speculating, but if this is the Vulture and he's appearing in Morbius, that's a pretty big tie. That's a pretty big connection back to the wider MCU. And a very exciting uh, prospect of the Sinister Six coming up in future films. This trailer really is a wild ride. It is the most exciting trailer I've seen in quite some time in terms of the Marvel Universe. Um, it holds a lot of promise for things that might or might not take place in the future. Are we going to get some kind of bizarre multiverse where we see Tobey Maguire put the suit back on 
Who knows? It would be cool. I would not be opposed to seeing some kind of Enter the Spider-Verse in real life film with the real life Spider-Man. I think that would be incredible. More likely, in my opinion, I think this is just a nod. As I said before, I think it's just a nod to the history and the heritage that Sony have with Spider-Man. That's what I believe it to be. But something in this trailer feels like Sony and Marvel might have made an agreement or come to an agreement that is more than what's been made public. God damn, I love movies. They are crazy. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video today. Uh, let me know what kind of theories you've got. Drop them down below. I'd love to have a conversation with some big Spider-Man fans, big fans of the movies, big fans of the Sony movies, the MCU movies. I think it'd be just cool to get into it with everyone now um, because this trailer's kind of shown the possibilities of if Sony and, M and Marvel and the MCU can really start to work together, we're going to get double the entertainment because it's all going to link together and we're going to get it from both fronts. We're going to get it from Marvel. We're going to get it from Sony. And Morbius in general, the trailer looks freaking fantastic. Um, I think the casting of Jared Leto is brilliant. I genuinely do think he's a great actor. I think he wasn't very good in Suicide Squad, but that was just my interpretation of Joker. I don't think he did a very good Joker or he tried to do something different and it didn't land with me personally. It may have landed with others. It just didn't land with me. But him as an actor, he is fantastic. And I think he looks brilliant as Morbius. And I'm very excited to see it. And I'm excited to see if any of these little Easter eggs in this trailer mean more than what they appear to be straight away. The more you think about it, the more it boggles the mind. We're seeing Michael Keaton here in a Sony-fronted Morbius film. So does that mean Morbius could go the other way and start crossing over with MCU products? Would we see Morbius and Doctor Strange teaming up on the big screen? Would we see Morbius and an upcoming Blade film crossing over? There is so much potential here if it's being realised and not just an easter egg for the sake of an easter egg. I believe there's some more depth behind the scenes here. I don't know what it is, but I feel like there's something going on that hints at something pretty cool coming in the future if Sony and Marvel can continue to work together in a harmonious way. What about you guys? Are you excited for Morbius? Hopefully you are. I think it looks brilliant. If you did like this video or you're just excited for Morbius, drop a comment down below. Hit like and smash the subscribe button. I would appreciate all of that. I'll see you next time for another one, guys. I'm going to go play some video games. Take care. See you later. Goodbye.